Hey guys, Rich here, and today we're going to go try to land at an unimproved field and kind of walk you through the decision-making process to do a landing like that. In this particular case, we're going to the gap between some center pivots in a irrigated field. Got a little distracted there. There's actually several people out on the river today. Kind of surprising. It's uh, already into November, and I didn't expect too many people to still be out here. But I think I've seen five or six canoes now. About 50 degrees Fahrenheit, so so pretty chilly to get yourself wet. We are well past the colorful fall here in Wisconsin. So now we've got the nine months of winter in front of us. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a couple passes to do a visual inspection, see how things are, look for big obstructions, look for rivers quite high right now. We've got a lot of rain recently. The center pivot itself is parked in its usual location. Wind appears to be neutral, but I would like to do a wind check going the other direction as well. Now that's interesting. Coming the other direction, the wind seemed to be about neutral. Going this direction, seems like we have a very clear headwind. So that's the direction that we're going to land. And that's our two passes. I've inspected the runway conditions, winds, so now we'll come around and do our landing. See how things look for that. I'm not super stoked about that center pivot coming from this direction, though. So let me see how I feel as I get closer. I've been into this field before with my long wing maul, but never with the short wings. And this plane just does not have the same performance as my old maul. This is not the best angle in terms of being able to use the entire landing strip either. This morning I was supposed to be recording a quick video for this product Plane Perfect has called One. The idea of the video was to show the product on the plane, then clean the plane with it, and show the difference between the before and after shots in terms of how clean it was. Unfortunately, the product works so well that I couldn't actually do the after shot because the product wouldn't stay on the airplane. So after being frustrated for a few minutes, I realized that this itself was actually a pretty compelling testimony about the quality of the product. The name One comes from the fact that it's designed to be used on any surface. So you can use it on your leading edges, on your windshield, on your cowl, on your fuselage, whatever you want to. One product, all surfaces. So give it a try. I think you'll like it. I think that felt okay though. The big lumps getting turned around here. Yeah, where I landed was pretty smooth. It's quite bumpy here though. There was a uh, truck over on the side there, and it is deer season. So instead of doing multiple takeoffs and landings here, I think we'll just do the one. Try not to make any enemies out of the farmer that lets us use this little spot. So here we go. Should be getting light. So there you go, that's all there is to that. Keep this one short for you. Go back to Lone Rock and park the plane there. I did want to get out, you know, one more time on one of the last nice days of the year. I do kind of wish we weren't disturbing anybody back there. Would like to have thrown the drone up and got some footage of the approach. I guess that's a good example of why you do the pass going both directions, so I don't have any good explanation for 
why on the downwind it seemed like the winds were calm and then on the approach it seemed like there was a 10 or so knot headwind and i believe that the 10 knot headwind was the more accurate measurement it's just you know the feel of how fast we were going over the ground seemed to jive better with that reading so that's our quick one for today there's about a hundred other videos on this channel. YouTube loves it when you click on other stuff on the same channel. So if you enjoyed this one, do that. Of course, you're always welcome to like and subscribe. And I'll see you on the next one.